All right, so we are playing against Croqueta, 22. And I'm back in the 10 minute pool instead of 15 plus 10. And there's a good reason for that. It just makes the games slightly quicker and, well, I'm an impatient boy. So now we get knight f3. I'm thinking of playing d3 here. Right, we're not playing Ruy Lopez, we're playing King's Indian attack. Okay, so this doesn't look like a move. We can either take on e5, or we can take on d4. What do we prefer? I think both have good reasoning behind them. But this is definitely one of those critical moments where it's like, okay, our opponent just moved the same piece twice in the opening. Should we try to punish them by taking the pawn? Or should we just take on d4 and go into kind of like a bird's position, essentially? That does look like a free pawn, but uh, there is one th important thing to mention. They do get some development. So for example, knight takes e5, queen f6. If, I, we, if we play like knight f3 or something, they can trade and double our pawns. And do we want to move to c4? Not sure. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna take. This, uh, yeah, actually there's a, there's another good reason, you know, 10 minute, you know, like this is supposed to be a speed run. Everybody just uses that, uh, that terminology. And as someone I love, I love speed runs, by the way, I am a huge fan of like Mario 64 speed runs, Pokemon speed runs, Mario Odyssey speed runs. Those ones are really cool too. And, uh, it's very like interesting to see that it's just called speedrun even though it's like not really the case i like the term climbing the rating ladder i why didn't i take that night see this is this is the autopilot at work luckily it didn't matter but that's uh that's the problem with autopiloting is you just make very silly moves. So I'm just going to leave this as is because we can always, always recapture here. And um, I'm thinking of going queen f1, trying to take f7. And if they take on e4, we can always either recapture on e4 or take on f7. I prefer taking on f7 here, um, which wasn't allowed for us. Taking looks good now. I, I cared a lot less about winning this pawn first because f7 was was weak. But now let's think. If we take the pawn, they can't really capture it back. And I think that's a huge plus for us. Now we can play moves like knight to c4 or knight to b3 uh, and try to target d4, but also getting our bishop out. So that would be good. And by the way, yeah, we might actually rename this just to climbing the rating ladder. You know, shout out to John Bartholomew, of course, because John is the king. Do we play knight b3? Or knight c4? I don't hate knight e4 either. Knight e4 is kind of a funny looking move because it's offering the trap of queen takes d5. Knight f6 check winning the... Um, Winning the queen there. We also have d6 trying to take advantage of the rook directly and trading off the pawn. That actually doesn't look so bad either because uh, this is a weak pawn. And since we have a weak pawn, it, it makes sense to do something with it. And d6 is trying to do something with it, which is directly exploit the long diagonal. So let's play d6. I think this is probably the most accurate way to play. So bishop b7. I don't think that's a move. I think we can just take. Um, so I want to play bishop g2, but g3 hangs. I could also take on a8. One thing I'm, I'm seeing is I could play knight e4 first, which is a funny looking move. The idea of knight e4 here is essentially I'm trying to take on a8, but I'm waiting until g3 is defended. And then I'll take on a8. And the first thing we should notice is when we ever give up a bishop that we fianchetto and in the king's, king's Indian attack, uh, we're going to be 
we should be very, very careful about giving up this, this bishop on g2. Here, I think we have enough material already where it's not much of a concern. But it needs to be considered uh, because if we make these moves too rashly, then, well, there could be weaknesses. So, nice. Looks like we're doing good here. Now bishop to d5 will come. And our opponent actually just resigns, which is fair. So, yeah, we do have a blunder here. Um, we could have just taken a full piece. Other than that, I think the game was smooth. So um, here, uh, the, another consideration is do we take the pawn? And uh, knight takes d4 was about plus one. And knight takes e5, we probably should have gone for it. I was trying to be a bit more principled and not try to go pawn and grubbing every single time. But it, it's actually the right strategy here. So after a move like uh, d6 or even like queen f6, like I mentioned... I didn't see knight g4. I saw knight f3, and I was thinking, yeah, we'll win a pawn in a variation like this. But we do double our pawns. And of course, we would consider the position like that we result in. Of course, of course, we're better by a fair amount and probably objectively winning by now. But I don't think it was the worst idea to try taking on d4. I mean, the, the idea is essentially... The King's Indian attack, whenever you see these structures, uh, you're fighting for the e5 square. So whenever they take on d4 or play a move like this, um, they don't have a pawn on e5. It actually makes g3 and f4 even stronger. So my idea here was I was just kind of playing on autopilot, which again is a very bad thing to do. Uh, but I had ideas of f4 in mind where all of a sudden f4 makes a little bit more sense and is a bit stronger because we can always even play moves like e5. Uh, and, and e5 is covered where it feels like they would actually rather have a pawn there instead of nothing at all. Uh, so it's just something to mention. And knight g4, yeah, this was very silly. Just a free knight. Uh, this is another case of autopilot that I got to watch out for. Of course, they end up giving the knight away anyways. And the game was a win. I think that's the main thing to cover here. So that covers the king's Indian. Nice. Thank you.